Welcome to the inaugural Painting Profits podcast. I am your host, Mike Williams, or ClickWiz Mike, as our first guest likes to call me. Uh, I'm with ClickWiz. We do we are uh, all things digital marketing for painting contractors. So if you need help with your website digital marketing, uh, just let me know or go to ClickWiz.com after the show. Um, our first guest here is Steve Burnett. I met Steve and his wife April back in 2010. <clears throat> when uh, I think it was about 2010, because uh, it was shortly after I started my business, and he, him, and his wife were uh, in the process of growing and scaling Burnett Painting, and uh, it's been really neat to watch how quickly he scaled that business, uh, sold it, and started DYB Coach, and now he's helping countless other painting contractors do the same thing that he did. And um, if you don't already know Steve, I highly recommend you get to know him because he's just full of great ideas and wisdom and just really loves to share that with others. Uh, so he has a real gift of, of teaching and, uh, and leadership. And so um, it's been uh, my pleasure to be friends with him uh, all these years. And uh, so I really high, highly recommend you get to know him here. And so that's what we're about to do here. So Steve, Welcome to the show. Um, before we get into it, let's uh, let's hear your story. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. And what an honor it is too to be your inaugural guest. When you reached out, I'm like, yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, and, wanted to uh, come out swinging. Here, <laughs> well, <laughs> hopefully, I fulfill that. So you know, um, no pressure, right? Yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, the story, right? How did it all? Uh, how did it all uh, start? Well, originally, I was from Michigan and uh, started my first painting business when I was 19. Uh, but I did everything wrong. I excuse me, worked for all the wrong people and I hired the wrong people. In short, I worked for builders and I hired skill. When instead, um, I should have not worked for builders and I should have hired for character. So I uh, built up a company, uh, but I was busy and broke and um, uh, things were really struggling after 9-11. Uh, the economy was in trouble in Michigan, and uh, I heard about a hurricane that hit a town called Punta Gorda, Florida. I was like, that's an interesting name. Never been to Florida before, and, and uh, we were hearing more about this, and I thought, well, let's go down and, and help these folks out because business was really slow in Michigan. Went, uh, planned to go down for a few weeks and fell in love with Florida. It was, I think, December or January of uh, 05. Yeah, so called January 1st of 05. And I went down there and I looked around and it was palm trees and, you know, beaches and it was beautiful. It was like 75, 80 degrees in December. And I just rolled out of uh, Southeast Michigan when it was uh, four degrees and eight inches of snow. And I'm like, oh, wow, you know, this is great. So I called my uh, wife at the time and I said, hey, it's beautiful down here. Like there's everything needs painted. Uh, the economy's in trouble in Michigan. I said, I think, you know, we should move down here and start over. And uh, she says, that's a good idea. I said, really? She says, yes, I think you should. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Well, I said, uh, <clears throat> how do you mean? You think I should? She says, well, you know, uh, I'm leaving you in short. I said, wow, that's wild. So uh, she did. She left. And um, and I did. So I went down to Florida and started over and uh, actually got uh, with my two kids, Stephen and Nadia. They were five and seven at the time. And I thought, okay, cool. We got all this hurricane work to help all these people get their homes put back together. And I uh, got the kids moved down. We found a condo and uh, painting away, um, uh, learning how to braid Nadia's hair and getting them to the bus stop and then, you know, running out and, and, uh, and then painting these homes and trying to hire at the same time. And, well, about six months into it, uh, something I didn't see on the horizon, but everybody else was painting and all the other roofers were down here and all the other you know, siding companies and how home, you know, you name it. They're all, everybody came down to help and everything got done in six months. Like Ponte Gorda was like rebuilt in six months. I went, oh boy. Okay. So here we are out of all of this, uh, out of all of this uh, work that we had, but I'm already recommitted. I'm now 1,250 miles away from all of my family, friends, business contacts. And, uh, we're, we're there, you know, the kids are in school and, um, and so I'm like, my goodness, I've got to figure this out. And I really didn't want to go to Michigan, back to Michigan anyway, because uh, Florida is a pretty, pretty nice place to, 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 to live. And so I, uh, I started going door to door. I would have to drive like 45 minutes out of the market, you know, away from Ponte Gorda and even out of of Port Charlotte. 
and up north into uh, northern Port Charlotte or North Port and, and maybe into Venice and go knocking on doors. And then, can I paint your house? Get off the lawn. Can I paint your house? Get out of here. Can I paint your house? You look hot. Can I give you some water? Yes, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> you know? Can I paint your house? No. <laughs> you <know? laughs> uh, and so I just, you know, I kept at it. I kept at it. I was really struggling. And there was one point where I remembered the uh, the uh, story in the Bible about Solomon and uh, asking for wisdom. And I just thought, well, that's kind of wild, but I, what else am I going to do? Because I didn't have any other hope. Um, and I had to figure something out. And so I started praying for wisdom while I'm waiting for that wisdom to come. Okay. What did come was an insatiable desire to read. And this uh, in itself could be a miracle because I'd never read before. In fact, I never read in school. Moreover, I'm a high school dropout. You know, I dropped out of high school when I was 15 and I, I despised reading. I hated it. But uh, after praying for wisdom, the passion for reading came. And I've just been pounding through books ever since. So anybody who knows me, uh, they just know I just pound through books. I just can't get enough. You know, and I don't know if you guys remember, uh, 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 remember that sh show in the 80s where it was like uh, the robot Johnny Five? What was it called? Short Circuit? Mm -hmm. Yep. You remember that? He's running around. Like, more, is alive. more input. More input. <laughs> <laughs> more input. Yeah. 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 So, so that's, that's kind of like me. I was like, I need more input, more input. So this is passion. Thanks to the, you know, the prayer, the answer to prayer, the passion to read. And so I just kept reading these books and I'd implement and I'd read these books and I'd take acts and I'd read these books and I'd execute. And a lot of people say, wow, that's amazing. Well, you know, maybe it is, but I had two little kids to feed. I didn't have an option. I couldn't just like say, forget it and go to the bar and drink my sorrows away, you know? Um, so I had to figure this out. I, you know, I had to, I couldn't, I had to take care of these two little kids. And that's so one just, thing that, sorry to interrupt, but that's one yeah, thing right. that always impressed me about you was that. Uh, you know, because I'm guilty of it when I I read a book and I will put it down and forget all of it. <laughs> it mm, that doesn't yeah. matter how good it is, or at least I'll forget most of it. But um, you are able to really take action on mm. on what you read and put it into practice. And, and that's uh, always been pretty remarkable. Well, thank you. Uh, I'd like to say it's just, you know, I'm just uh, uh, good discipline. But the truth mm -hmm. was like uh, being poor being broke and struggling to find a way to feed your kids it 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 builds that desire you know to like just got to get after it and so at any point i can just like draw back because i know what those emotions feel like um you know i think elon musk said somebody asked him what's it like being an entrepreneur he says it's like uh staring into the abyss eating glass you know <laughs> and so i I, I can just, I all I do is pull back on those feelings of all that fear and just like, oh my goodness. And then it provides the urgency to like, all right, let's go lean forward and get after it. Well, that, and, uh, you know, a bit of coffee helps to, to, uh, yeah. execute. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so kept, uh, I uh, still, still had to keep knocking on doors, but then we started executing. And some of the first lessons I learned was local networking. And so joined a BNI and, um, and then, and then chamber. Um, excuse me. And then eventually later on rotary. And um, I knew that uh, I couldn't afford a business coaching at the time, but I needed some coaching. I need some accountability. So started a local mastermind group Monday 20, yep. uh, which you may remember. And yes, uh, I meet, do remember that. Yeah. Monday Those mornings the at 6 a.m., right? Like, yep. Yeah, you had to be committed uh, if you're in. And uh, yeah. this, who's getting, who's meeting at 6 a.m. on Monday mornings? Yep. Yep. And if you're late, it, uh, you had to put 20 bucks in. Yeah, 20 I don't know if you remember, but I was pretty broke at the time. I remember <laughs> I would ride my bike so I could get exercise. And the one yeah. time I was late and, uh, I remember I just hustling. I got there. I was so out of breath, but I made it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yep. That yep. So Those awesome. are the days. <laughs> well, you know, something that I think is important too for, all your listeners or viewers uh, to realize is that we were coming through the great depression during these times, you know? So mm -hmm. when we talk about, we were broke, like everybody was broke and, and yeah. many good companies were going out of business. Mm -hmm. And so these were really hard times, you know? Yeah. Um, 
And uh, so thankfully to the Monday 20 and to you and the rest of the mastermind group, we had, you know, accountability and encouragement through these hard times. And you're right. We had to, we had to kick those twenties in and we felt those twenties. Right? Yep. <laughs> like, yep. you know? uh, and then, uh, and then also what kind of made the group magic was that the money didn't go to any one of us. We would donate it to charities, but not and things, yeah. that, you know, we created later on uh, together. So, um, started networking and uh, that helped. That helped a lot getting involved in networking groups because paying for leads did not work. It was such a racket. It attracted and it still attracts the, um, you, you know, the worst clients. I'm talking about paid lead services like, uh, um, I'll leave Angie. the names out of it. Yeah. Okay. There yeah. she is. <laughs> yep. and there's another one who claims to be an advisor for homes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, don't do it. Just, <laughs> they're so yeah. bad. They're so yeah, bad. Yeah, they are. Yeah, um, there are much better ways to go about it. So uh, networking, and then finally had a couple of crews going, and uh, and uh, even you know started leasing an executive office over there on Toledo Blade. I think we used to, I think we had some Monday twenty meetings there, and I remember sitting there at the office one day, and things were going okay, but we weren't setting records. We were you know you know getting by. I had a couple of crews going, and I come across a quote. Uh, from Seth Godin and went something like if the marketplace isn't talking about you there's a reason the reason is you're boring and you're boring on purpose because it's safe yeah it's powerful at the, yeah at the time it felt like a punch to the gut I went oh my gosh yeah. you know and what it meant to me was that we were doing everything safe uh, now we were polite, professional, but we never pushed any boundaries and, uh, you know, generally an easygoing guy, or I used to be until I come across this quote, now I push boundaries, you know, want to take chances and risk. Uh, so I just said, wow. Okay. So I got to thinking about this. And so the first thing I did was I joined the uh, Venice chamber because I decided that I wanted to target on the city of Venice excuse me, out of all Southwest Florida, because we were driving all over. We had driven down to Naples, which was like an hour, hour and a half uh, drive at one point. So we just said, okay, let's just, let's focus on Venice, Florida. And at the time we were living in North Florida. And so um, joined the Venice Chamber and uh, had this presentation I was going to give. And it was not a safe presentation. Um, there were about 90 people there, I believe. And uh, it was at one of the country clubs, I forget. And I remember feeling just so insignificant, and um, I talked myself out of it. I said, forget it. When the mic comes around and it's my turn, I'm going to give the usual wah, 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 right? And I'm out of here. Well, halfway through the crowd, one of my competitors stood up and just gave a general presentation, which everybody else was giving. Now, I'm not knocking them or their presentation, but it was, it was the same one everybody else was giving. So thanks to them, um, I said, okay, now I've got to do it. I've got to bring it. You know? um, I had a little flip cam at the time, and uh, I saw a friend there from another company, so I threw it to him. I said, hey, record this in case it works, would you? And so we did, and so that's when I stood up and I did the uh, swimsuit body paint commercial. I remember it's that. On, <laughs> it's, on, it's on YouTube now, <laughs> and, uh, you know, something about swimsuit body paint. And, uh, you know, I said, so, you know, if you're all about a thong, and I held out the um, – uh, artist brush and then I said or if you're wide bodied and I held up an 18 inch 2 inch nap roller you know and I said call Burnett painting we've got your back <laughs> and like everybody's ah, you know? yeah. and, and those the people the interesting part is the people that you think would have been offended it was the I'll just say wide bodies who came up to me to tell me how hilarious that was I, you know, I don't know if they're going to come up and smack me or whatever like, <laughs> that was so funny you know and so if you think about it. Uh, there was nothing safe about that. And after what helped is that like I was towards the end of, I, it felt like 90 people, maybe there were 60 there. I don't, I'm not, I don't know exactly. But at the end of all these normal, all these safe presentations, I stand up and do this, um, this wild one, right? Or what Seth Godin would call remarkable, remarkable, because others remark about it. And so because of that feedback and everybody coming up and me and especially the, the wide bodies, like, hell, it's hilarious. I was thinking, all right, well, what can I do next? You know? And so that one just to fuel the next one and the next one. And so I think after that I, I did, I sang Sinatra, you know, fly me to networking at noon. I even wore, you know, a suit with a skinny black tie and tried to sing like a few lines there. And, and, you know, that, that worked and they love that and caught it on video and shared that on video and shared it to social and, and even started emailing them out to our customers. And then the one that really took off was, was the Hulk Hogan 
uh, presentation. <laughs> Let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> and, <laughs> and again, I'm not going to go through that one right now, but I don't have the script in front of me. <laughs> but it was a tons of fun, and that one got a, a, a ton of shares. And uh, that's, you know, when we really started getting around about all these wild things we were doing. And so from then, we just kept expanding and uh creating other you know uh, uh abas if you will you know ads that look like anything but advertising uh and, and and continue to grow the company some of them off the top of my head would be uh paint it forward 2.0s so we would put out nominations to the committee community to nominate um uh, people who need their homes painted but can't afford to do so for themselves. And then we receive the nominations, uh, share them with the team, and they get to pick who we paint it forward to. Uh, we would let the newspaper and media know about the nominations, and then they would publish it. So we'd get all this free press uh, as we're looking for nominations. And then sometimes, even after it was done, uh, they would publish it again. And uh, actually, one time for a paint it forward, we made front page, top of fold. Actually, we split the fold, but it was it was a nice, very big. Front yeah. page article there. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, those ABAs. Um, it, I, back to the uh, the Hulk Hogan one. Um, that one, I think it, you've you've been passing the the costume around the DYB group, oh, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. And, uh, teaching other people the country. How, to, how to do that, and uh, it's yeah. been cool to see mm -hmm. all the other um, painting contractors in the group. Yeah, you know, duplicate that, and some of them have even taken it to the next level. So it's been cool. Yeah, they have. Mark Polis is one that comes to mind. He uh, yeah, he, he went. He, he turned right around and did like a Mister T right after that. You know? yeah. <laughs> Pity a yeah. fool. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And it's awesome. Uh, it reminds me of you might remember uh, Lewis from uh, uh, the cafe. Yeah. And I remember one time he's like Steve. So just for our listeners there, he's like straight from New York City. He's like New York City Italian as you can get. Uh, and he was a good friend of ours. And, and he said, Steve, come here. I said, yeah. He goes, hey, not for nothing, but people are going to start talking about you. <laughs> I'm like, good. good. That's the whole plan, That's the point. Man. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, um, uh, for sure. That's it. And so, yeah, we just kept building on ABAs. Uh, you know, gourmet cookies. We would do the gourmet cookies in a can. And um, they were delicious, and we'd give those away. We would uh, give them away as a Facebook contest. It was a really easy. We'd just say, caption this with some silly photo. And uh, somebody went a can of our gourmet cookies. And, and everybody loved this because the cookies were delicious. Now, if the cookies were from, like, uh, off the uh, grocery shelf, then it would have been a gimmick. But it mm -hmm. wasn't. It's a hit, and it's still a hit because the cookies are delicious. And so we'd give them away as door prizes, too, at net networking events. And uh, they used to save the wine for last, but then when we brought our cookies, they would save our cookies, the gourmet cookies for last, which was you know, uh -huh. an awesome promotion, right? To, yeah, to be featured everybody was fighting the last huh? away. Yeah, they're like, you can take the hooch. We want the cookies, you know? Yeah. Yeah. A uh, few other things we did is we would uh, interview other companies and services in the community. We call them community spotlights. And so by doing this, we're giving value to them and sharing them with our network. And um, we would record a video, you know, five, 10 minutes long, just asking them about their business, or I would, I say we, uh, and kept it real low key, just use a phone and then take that video and, and share it with our network, uh, email to our customer list, another way to easily stay top of mind. And um, customers, you know, email us, hey, I don't know if you're in the market for uh, a roofer or for a mechanic or for insurance agent, but I just interviewed John who uh, I know and trust and you can check it out here, you know, forward it on to a friend. And many customers would respond back, say, thank you. That was very helpful. Appreciate that. You know, then you take that video, give it to the person you interviewed and uh, let them know they can share it with their network and then it introduces their network to you and all for, you know, 10, 15 minutes of time, really easy to do. Uh, yeah. You know, especially come out of the recession. A lot of people say, Steve, you're so creative. I'm like, we didn't have any money. You know, we had to be creative coming out of the Great Recession, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, the, we have a couple of clients uh, that are in the DYB group that are implementing that. Um, and it's a great way to develop content, unique content for your website as well, because then you can get mm -hmm. those videos transcribed. Uh, and then you can send them to the, the person they interviewed and have them link back to your site. So uh, there's a lot of ways you can 
chop up those videos and and reuse them and and get a lot more value for your your marketing bank bucks. Yeah, right on. See, I forget about all that uh, additional things that you you can do now with all your click quiz magic there. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, what were some other ones? One was yes. <laughs> Remember, yes, Young Entrepreneur Scholarship. So this one yes. we did as a mastermind group. And uh, because we were, <laughs> we were pulling together all our money from being late, <laughs> not doing what we promised we were going to do, not getting our things done, yeah. you know, or as many. You, usually I'd show up all caffeinated and I'd say, all right, I'm going to get these seven projects done this week. <laughs> and show up, I'm going to get half of them done. I'm like, I'm not showing up caffeinated anymore. I'm too optimistic. <laughs> yeah, we set some, yeah. some pretty high goals there. And, yeah. Uh, that's what happens. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, so we'd pull up some money after after a while and uh, we created the Young Entrepreneur Scholarship. And so kind of like the paint it forward, we put out nominations to the community of uh, young entrepreneurs who either had a business or an idea for a business. They would uh, submit their business or business idea. And then we would invite those who qualify to come in and, and present their idea to us. Uh, and then we would uh, award them the uh the money for their business and that was a lot of fun yeah 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 i remember that one yeah yeah i think mm -hmm. uh the one time we bought the, this kid a new lawnmower um and and i think we made the front page of the paper on that one too didn't we yeah we did we did and here was a lesson i learned from that is always going alone uh norm from home depot he kicked in a leaf blower so i was like norm why don't you come stand with us in the picture because the newspaper was coming by he's like all right so he's standing out there in his apron and the story, the paper got the story right, but because everybody saw that great big brand, Home Depot, everybody said, "Hey, that was a nice thing you guys did with Home Depot." Excuse me. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> we did all the work. What are you talking about? <laughs> we let Norm sit in the picture because they kicked in a leaf blower. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. So, uh, anytime you do one of these, just go it alone. Just go it alone. Yeah. You're doing yeah. all the work. Just go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Take the yeah. picture somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, uh, there was one time we were asked to, uh, I think it was Dallas and I, uh, Dallas uh, for listeners was another member of our, our Monday 20. We were asked if we would volunteer and help out at one of the senior uh, services in town with tech. They were having a tech meeting. And so we both showed up and, and, um, and uh, he helped with one phone and I helped with the other one. And uh, we would just walk them through. And that's when we realized that there was a big need in the community for seniors who don't know how to operate their smartphones. And so we decided to launch uh, what eventually became iClass and uh, approached the Venice Library. And I said, hey, if you're willing, I'd be offering to uh, give a class on how to operate iPads and iPhones. And uh, they looked at me like, oh. I'm like, what? Did I say something wrong? They're like, they're like, Steve, you don't understand. People come in with these things still in the box, unopened, asking us to help them. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, so I'll help them. Um, and so we did. And uh, we called it iClass. And it would. It, it took uh, a month or two to get going. And then, again, it got some press. And before you know it, we had standing room only. We had, uh, I think they put out 80 chairs. And even at the back of the room, there'd be people standing up for the whole hour, hour and a half of the iClass while. I'm presenting up front, running everybody through. Now, if somebody wants to do this, here's like the tip is that you don't have to be an expert. Really, all I did was walk them through the basics. They just need to know the basics, how to move apps around, where is the app store, how to adjust their settings. And they loved it. So we that went on for a long time. I created an app because it, the library is, I mean, it's, it's a public, so I couldn't advertise. Um, now, I probably had a branded shirt on. And my shirt was my, you know, one of our cars were parked out front or something. But generally, you couldn't advertise. I'd introduce myself and, and what I did, but went right into just serving them. But what I did was um, I found a service that created an app. I think the app was like $30 a month. And the app would allow like five buttons in the bottom. And so the first button, I would have um, the calendar. No, excuse me. I would have videos. So I made videos for them. And so I would say in the class, hey, listen, if you want more help, um, I made videos for you. Uh, you can watch them. You can go to YouTube or you can download this app. Also on the app is a schedule because everybody wanted to know when's the next high class. So here's the schedule. And uh, I'm going to walk them through the app on the big screen behind me. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, The then I would say, um, also, if you're interested about what we do, uh, you know, here's the third button would be testimonials. So I have all of our video testimonials there. The fourth button would be our story. Um, how April and I got together and built Brent Painting. And then the fifth one was to schedule nesting. 
Thanks. And so that generated some business for us as well. But again, it was just giving value, giving value. Yeah, because um, in that in in the Venice area, um, it's all retirees, right? And so that's that's your market. You know, so mm -hmm. so getting them all in one place, uh, you've yeah. got a captive audience. You don't even have to mm -hmm. market to them. You just yeah, generate there. some goodwill, and uh, and mm -hmm. they're yours. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say that along with networking um, was huge. Um, you know, didn't have money for uh, to hire, you know, ClickWiz at the time, right, to invest in uh, some of your strategies. But, you know, those ABAs along with networking at BNI Chamber and especially Rody were, were huge. And then, you know, continuing to um, learn leadership skills to develop and build a team, one that can operate without you, and then researching the latest tech in the apps to streamline operations to operate without you, and then, you know, studying sales so that you can close most of the, uh, the jobs you go on and get back the rest of, uh, get back your time and cash flow handsomely. Yeah, that's awesome. So worried about that, uh, got around, I think it was the Hawk Hogan one that really tipped, and then the uh, trade, a trade association at the time was PDCA. Uh, it's now PCA, and they reached out to me and asked if I would come and share our story. Because, again, uh, we did this through the Great Recession. You know, while many good businesses were going out of business, we were blessed to um, to grow and to succeed. Mm -hmm. So I said, sure, because uh, I love to help and love to share. Ended up being, I think it was 2014, February, Reno, and uh, it was like the keynote stage. I was like, oh, my goodness. So I got up there scared to death and just shared everything we were doing. And afterwards, um, guys come up and said, hey, do you coach? Do you consult? And I was like, well, not really. I've got a you know, paying company to run, but I learned it paid. So I said, okay. Uh, started helping some guys. But uh, I wanted to get the process out of my head. And I needed to some kind of put it, wrap it around a framework. So from February to October is when I wrote the book, How to Double Your Business. And that was published October 14. And then after that was published, the phone really started blowing up. So April said, listen, you go help these guys and I'll run the painting business. I said, okay, cool. I'll do that. So I started flying around, giving workshops, seminars, and then uh, coaching. Well, after about two months, uh, April and I were, she said, I miss you. I said, I miss you too, because we, we hadn't really seen each other, but yet we had built up Burnett Painting together. And I said, you know what? I said, uh, let's sell the painting company and you come help me do this. And now, uh, you know, we could have um, promoted somebody to general manager to run it, but there were so many people who needed help uh, because, again, these were really hard times that were coming out of that. I felt like I didn't want to take the time to put a general manager in place and let's just go ahead and sell this and then go all in and um, and helping as many you know people that we can across the country and Canada and even Australia now. And that was how uh, DYB Coach got launched. And that was, what was that, about eight years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's been uh, really neat to see how many painting companies and contractors that you've helped along that journey. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, uh, and you kind of brought me in, uh, kind of, it, it was just been kind of a natural progression as you started that and, you know, started referring some of the painting contractors to us. Um, and so that's why. Well, the, let me, so let me interrupt you here, Mike. This is important. Pardon me. Uh, in, 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 I think I've shared this. I know I've shared it in DYB, but the online space, the ad space, the website build space is, it's kind of like the muffler shops, the mechanics of the eighties. Okay. You would not send your wife to a mechanic in the eighties because they couldn't be trusted. And unfortunately the online, so that's what the online space is today. And the reason why I brought you in and the reason why I refer you hands down is because point blank, you're honest. You're not just good at what you do, but you're honest. So here's 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 an example of uh, Seth Peak out in uh, California. We were working together. He said, uh, he says, hey, I'm thinking about some uh, SEO. And I said, okay, here, reach out to Mike and, um, and he'll get you set up. I says, great. So he reached out to you and um, he said, okay, well, let me take a look at what you've got going on there or, you know, whoever it was. And you emailed him back. Hey, Seth. So I checked out your website. I looked at your market. And as much as I love your business, you don't need SEO. I don't know of another agency who would tell somebody that, you know? Yeah. So that's why we brought you in. That's why you're the only web builder. You're the only SEO. You're the only Google ads service that we trust and that we refer. So thank you for that. And I believe you've built over I appreciate that. websites for our clients now. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, so that's why a few years ago we funnel. Sorry. Yeah, we went all in on on the the painting industry, and so that now that's our our total focus is just helping painting contractors because you know we've learned so much about the industry that we we really feel like if we just focus on that, um, there's there's plenty of people we can help. So yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. The other is. Uh, a couple hundred thousand at least. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yes, sir. Cool. Yeah. So um, on that note, like what, uh, you know, the, the digital world has changed quite, quite a bit since you ran uh, Burnett Painting. Um, mm. You know, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm immersed in that, but what do you see uh, as far as changes in, in digital marketing for painting contractors? As far as changes, so um, yeah, a few distinctions. One is it's still hard no to like Angie's leads and home advisors. And I've gone on mm -hmm. record saying that they are a racket. And I'll just explain that real quick and then we'll get to the other avenues. But I just want to make these clarifications because some will confuse them for online um, uh, marketing. Mm -hmm. So they are a racket because when you pay them, not only do they give you junk leads, but when you pay them, you are essentially funding their SEO bumping them up to the top of Google, if you, they, you pay them, bump them up, you are paying them to push you down the serves. And that's really bad. So again, that aside, the, uh, you know, opportunities are still SEO, um, you know, and then we know that uh, Google ads are working uh, in some markets. Now it's not every market. No. And, uh, and then what's the new um, uh, Google, uh, Local service ads. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then we're hearing more about those. Some guys are having some success with those as well, and yeah. uh, and and so that's good. And then it's key too to make sure that you have a robust website. It's key, and I believe this since the beginning. Uh, we've got a framework we call the UIB website conversion, uh, UIB uh, conversion website, and it's powerful because it will uh, detour unqualified leads and it will pretty much pre-sell qualified leads. And what we've done is we've incorporated a lot of the marketing psychology in there. Uh, a lot of it we've learned from Dr. Cialdini. He's the author of the book Influence and which makes that powerful. So that's really important as well. Yeah, we've heard from several of our clients who just built a website with us and didn't do any other SEO or pay-per-click ads or anything. Um, and they say immediately after launching the new DYB conversion funnel website, they, mm. they see not just more leads, but better quality leads. Uh, so it does, it does serves that dual purpose of generating higher conversions or leads, but also pre-qualifying them to, mm. um, to, to get better quality leads. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. And again, I, I you know, I only recommend you to build those out one, cause we trust you Two, Here's something else that's unique about Mike is that he gets things done. So uh, many other web designers will say, all right, here's a laundry list, uh, uh, you know, send them over to us and then you won't hear from them for you know months on end or whatever, because they piled you up where Mike's like, no, here's a list. Let's get it. Come on. And uh, he'll turn sites around. What about four weeks? I think you've turned one around in three weeks. Yeah, typically it's about four weeks. Um, you know, there's there's certain things that we can't do for the customer, like build, writing their story for them. It's, and so, so most of the time when there's a delay in the, the site build, it's because we're waiting on mm -hmm. that. But um, uh, for the most part, if we have everything we need, two or three weeks is about the time it takes us to build and launch the site. So, yeah, right on. Yeah. You know, that and then the classic, uh, you know, content, keep creating content, keep publishing yeah. articles. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, uh, you know, crush it online. So, yeah. Uh, since we're in the digital conversation here, um, one of the biggest things that I see that, um, really sets some painting contractors apart is how well they use tech in their business. Mm. <clears throat> um, so what are you seeing as some of the, uh, the best apps and, and technology that, that painting contractors are using these days? Yeah, great question, Mike. Thank you. This is something um, I'm passionate about because th the one thing we want for everybody is to make profits and get their time back so that they can spend time with their family and make an impact in their community. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's what's a, you, you could build a million, multi-million dollar business, but if you're not making profits or you don't have your time, what's for what, you know, just say you have that. That sounds like a nightmare to me. Mm -hmm. So instead, you want to build a profitable business. 
uh, with uh, Streamlined, Streamline your operation, get your time back. So tech is very important to us. And so now I'm trying to pull up, uh, while I'm on the spot here, the uh, our flow chart or tech stack <laughs> that we recommend. And so, you know, uh, and uh, so it would start with a booking calendar on your website, Conversion Funnel. And that can be either, you know, you can book me or Acuity are uh, two, you know, the popular ones. I believe with UQL, Acuity, you're, you'd be, you're obviously the expert here. You've got the Google Analytics um, that can track the Acuity leads for you. Yeah. Uh, back in my day, we didn't have Acuity. We had to use You Can Book Me. But, <laughs> uh, you Can Book yeah. Me has gotten better about that um, recently, too. Uh, well, since Google Analytics 4 has has come out, it's actually kind of made Acuity more difficult to, to mm -hmm. track properly. So they're they're both pretty similar now. There you go. Uh, you know, from there, you're going to go into, okay, well, I don't, I don't know if I remember the whole flow chart. So, um, actually April, my wife, she leads this area. I should like pull her in. Hi. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, she, she handles this area of, of our business and that is, uh, hooking up all these apps together with Zapier and she's got a team. Uh, but so if we go through the life of a lead, uh, from, from the booking calendar, uh, always zap into your Google contacts. Um, and a Google spreadsheet, just so you have a home base for your customer list is very important uh, because chances of, you know, apps come and go, but Google uh, so far is, you know, not going anywhere. So you can no. always sync to it to pull those customers. And then from there, you want to go into an estimating app. Uh, there are two that are leading the field right now. One uh, that I'm really excited about, it's the latest one, uh, Drip Jobs, uh, Tanner Mullen. Great guy. He's actually he came through DYB. He's uh, he's up there just north of Tampa, actually in Ocala. Oh yeah. Um, and he's got an awesome pipeline CRM built in to it, and uh, just released production rates as well. And then the other one is uh, Paint Scout. Uh, it's another estimating app. It's uh, fantastic. From there, you want a project manager uh, app, and we recommend Monday. It's awesome because it gives you two things. You can not only zap all your projects into it. But you can also see a timeline and having a timeline is helpful if you're visual and also it's helpful for showing your customers. Well, you know, I heard you say you'd like to get this done in three weeks. As you can see, we have an opening right now. Uh, however, we book first come first serve and I meet with nice people like you all day, day in and day out. Uh, could we go ahead and get this locked in for you? And a lot of times that'll help you close the job on the spot so that you don't have to worry about following up later on. And then from uh, Monday, let's see, somebody, the project manager, QuickBooks Online uh, for finance. And then well, it seems like a missing one. So, yeah, that's off the top of my head. That's it. Again, this isn't uh, my area of implementing. I could probably pull it up on the computer real quick. But, yeah. uh, you know. Oh, yeah, there's so many so many apps out there that, that can help, you know, streamline your operations and your marketing. So <clears throat> it, it's it's really important to, to stay on top of that. So, um, yeah, you know, speaking of, uh, April, your wife, mm -hmm. uh, you guys have been uh, a real, uh, dynamic team, uh, mm -hmm. not just in Burnett painting, but especially in DYB coach and, uh, DYB digital now, um, is what she's running. <clears throat> um, what's it, uh, share some tips with us to, um, you know, how you guys make that work, you know, working together side by side and, um, you know, just so for other business owners, because for most of us, um, having, uh, our wives involved in the business, just, it makes sense, but sometimes it can be challenging. So, um, mm -hmm. share some tips with us, how, how you guys make that work. Okay. Well, full disclosure, it's not always uh, sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but really it comes back to biblical principles, you know, love is patient, love is kind, which is much easier said than done. Uh, for me, what do I do? I choose to only focus on what I appreciate because being there, our spouse, we can never fire them. Right. Uh, and we are going to frustrate each other. And I have to realize that I probably frustrate her more than I feel like uh, she might frustrate me. Mm -hmm. But, uh, it it does work well. So one is I'm just I just remain grateful for uh, her strengths and for everything she does. And we have different personalities. Uh, I'm the analytical, um, uh, the one where she's the spontaneous and loves that fun. You know, I, uh, she's the life of the party, right? And so she loves uh, bouncing around and, and new things and whatnot, which is cool. 
you know, I, I research the best strategies and then um, she will execute them or delegate them to the team to get them executed. Uh, the, you know, the other is um, it's, it's a lot of patience, you know, patience, understanding, like how else it really comes back to those biblical principles of love and, uh, and forgiveness. And it, yeah, for me, it's just being grateful for, um, I, did, I only focus on, on her, um, uh, her strengths, you know, and that yeah. keeps me, that keeps me grateful. And, um, and we talk about it too. So we'll, we have some tools, uh, for when things aren't going well. And one is, you know, empty the jug and she'll say, Hey, I need to empty the jug. And what that means is we just haven't connected and she just needs me to listen. And which is hard for us as men, we want to fix things, but in this, the, the right thing for us to do at this point is just to listen. Mm-hmm. And so she shares everything that's on her heart. And then at the end, when I think it's at the end, I'll just say, you know, what, if there could be one more thing, what would it be? And a lot of times, like the real issue will then come up because then she feels like she can trust me enough to share it. And I won't flip out. Um, and then the other one is, uh, you know, not interrupting each other. That's a tough one because, you know, as if I'm running things and I'm responsible for, you know, the, the, the direction of the business and for everything going, like, I feel like I have the right to go and interrupt her. That's not okay. Instead, if we need to interrupt each other, we'll just say, hey, is this a good time? And we know what that means. We know that it means I've got something I really need to tell you, but is it a good time? And sometimes it's still not, even knowing that it's not, um, you know, say, no, but in 30 minutes it will be, or in 15 minutes it will be. So not interrupting each other is a big one, too. Um, And then the third tool is uh, when we would... Uh, like one of us to change the way we're doing something, okay, is we uh, we would approach it with, I have a problem that I need help with. And <laughs> when uh, you do X, I feel Y. Could you help me with my problem, please? You know, mm-hmm. and so we're taking ownership of it, but it helps them to understand that, like, we have issue with it. Could you work with us on this, you know? And, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll just throw out like a, a silly, this is not, this one's not real. Uh, but like, I have a problem when you come in late, I feel like, you know, you don't take, uh, work or our business seriously. Is this something that you could help me out with? You know, and then your spouse is going to be more receptive to, um, helping you. Right. Cause this is something, cause we all have like these irks and these things about us. And so if we understand that we have these irks and these things that were usually created from our childhood or something silly, uh, then we know it's not personal. It's just this whatever irk we have and uh, we're working through it. We're trying to deal with it, but we want the twitches to go away. So I have this twitch <laughs> that I need help with, you know? And so those are really the three big tools. Empty the jug. Uh, is this a good time? And I have a problem that I need help with. Yeah, that last one is is powerful. That uh, that's one that I struggle with because uh, my wife does our our bookkeeping and all the, the financial stuff. And um, and when I want to change things, it mm-hmm. it drives her crazy, you know. And yeah. so oh, yeah. uh, so that yeah. that creates a lot of conflict in in our business. But um, but yeah, just approaching that from the uh, uh, hey, I need help with this um, mm-hmm. perspective. I think uh, it, that that really would help a lot and and bring her walls down, you know, and, mm-hmm. and um, put her in a mindset of helping versus, oh, oh crap, he's, he's going to wreck everything now because he's yeah. changing something again. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, because so. we're the entrepreneurs. We're risk averse. We're like, ah, let's go for it. Where they need yeah. that security. They're like, no, change is not security, you know. She doesn't um, like it. So, yeah. And then yeah. we did, so this reminds me, actually, April and I did a podcast on how to work with your spouse. I forget. Uh, it might be like number 75-ish in the 70s, mm-hmm. maybe, on the DYB podcast. And so if somebody want to deeper dive on that, we both, like, share some stories and, and the tools that we use to, uh, if they're interested. Yeah, I actually, I uh, was thinking uh, we should have you both on the podcast and um, and have you talk a little bit more about that, that dynamic, and she can... Talk, tell us a little bit more about uh, the DYB Digital and, uh, and go. all the cool things that they're doing over there. Yeah, that'd be great. Cool, cool. All right, um, let's see. Do we have time for one more? Uh, yeah, real quick. Um, one of the uh, one of the biggest challenges to running a painting company is managing a team. Mm. What kind of tips can you give us for hiring and keeping A players on yeah. your team? 
Great question. So it starts from the hiring ad. You have to make sure you use a language that attracts people of high character. Yep. Uh, generally, we use language attracting skill. Instead, you want to attract, use language that attracts high character because it is much easier to teach somebody with great character how to paint than it is to teach a painter great customer experience or how to show up on time or how to tuck your shirt in or how to be polite or how to be a people person, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so it starts right with a hiring ad, use language uh, to hire for character. And then from there you want to use, uh, actually we have 11 interview questions. If you just search DYB coach, 11 interview questions, you can, uh, Google should pop them up. I'm sure Mike got those SEO'd for us yep. and uh, be able to download those. But those questions are powerful because they will help to reveal the character of the person. And a lot of times too, when you're asking them, it doesn't even realize, you don't even realize that they're revealing their true character. And so if there's some red flags, they'll fly out right then, or you know, they'll let you know they're an all-star just by the response. Once you hire them, you bring them on. Um, Orientation is very important. So don't just throw them in the fire, walk them through the business, show them your vision, your mission statement, introduce them to the team, and then, make sure you put them with, we always had one of our crew leads was a great coach himself. And he just had a big heart and loved, also loved helping people. And so we would always put them with him. He always got the new people and, and work with them for a couple of weeks. And they say, okay, yeah, this, uh, you know, Joe's good to go and he's going to be an all-star. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's put him over here on this team. And, uh, and then from there you want to cultivate your culture. And uh, this is a whole another episode, but it's really important to take care of the culture of your team. I remember uh, a friend invited me to breakfast down in Naples to meet a special friend. So I get down there and it was Peter Schmidt. He's a former CEO of Porsche. I'm like, oh, my goodness, you know. And, <laughs> and then so for two hours, he regaled us with his stories of uh, working at Porsche. And then we're standing outside and he says, you like sports cars, Stephen? I said, yeah, you know, <laughs> well, my man doesn't, right? And uh, he goes, where's yours? And I said, oh, it's, it's that white GMC pickup over there. <laughs> and so he's back in the early days. And, and he, looked, uh, he looked at me and he says, remember this. He says, you are the curator of your culture. And I uh, kind of let it sink in a little bit. Now, at first I thought, I'm just a painting contractor. We're just painters. We don't have culture. I was dead wrong, dead, dead wrong. And it took me a while to understand that. Once I understood that, wow, uh, you get, you hire for character, you cultivate your culture and your company will take care of itself. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <clears throat> that's important because, you know, the, your, your team, they're the ones that are in the customer's home doing the job. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. uh, having, having those eight players uh, in there doing that can make all the difference. So, right on. Yeah. Cool. Well, Steve, I think we're about out of time here. So um, I, you've really uh, you really brought a lot of uh, value to this episode, and I really thank you for um, you know making our first episode such a great one. So I hope uh, hope everybody enjoys it. But um, but yeah, so if uh, like I said before, if you don't already know Steve, you need to get to know him. You can learn more about him at dybcoach.com and uh, check out all of the, he's got some great content on there and uh, he's got the DYB cafe. So it's, I, I don't know what he's charging for it these days, but it's, it's pretty cheap to sign up for that. And that gives you access to what the, the Facebook group, tons of, uh, uh, of, uh, um, courses on courses. that, that mm -hmm. teach how to do all of the, everything we talked about today and, uh, and a lot more in there too, as well. So, right uh, and then for your audience, I'll give them a free copy of the book. Just cover the uh, six ninety five shipping and handling. Sweet. Great deal. Alrighty. Awesome. Mike, thank you for click who is Mike. Thank you for having me on. It's been an honor and a, a pleasure to learn and to grow together, but to be your, uh, your first guest. Appreciate that very yeah. much. Uh, thanks again, Steve. Um, and uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in to the first uh, Painting Profits podcast. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, just uh, go to clickwiz.com. That's C-L-I-K-W-I-Z.com and uh, send us a message or uh, give us a call. Thanks.